Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's live. Put in the comments where you're from and how you're feeling today. Emotions have been high the last few days with the full moon. Is it full moon? Yeah, full moon in Leo, but it was actually in Cancer for the last few days. So people have been feeling the intensity and we've been seeing it in people who are doing our 28 day life reset. It felt like there was a separation yesterday between the people who are really committed and the people who really want to but just couldn't make it. So if you're in the 28 day and you're still going, congratulations. Let me know in the comments. From Boston, Cali, nice. Uh, we're actually opening up spaces for those of you in our app to sign up in your local area so you can connect with other members. It's pretty cool when you're on a Zoom call because you get to talk to people from Germany, Finland, Argentina, Mexico, all at the same time. And they're all going through the same program and it's pretty interesting to see. Anyone in London? Uh, we do have people in London. I don't know specifically who from the coaching side of things off the top of my head, but you can go into our app and when you sign up, there's a London location space and you can sign up for that one and just reach out to people in the community. Food allergies. Recently started, is it? So when you say recently started, do you mean that you haven't changed anything and you're still eating the same foods and now they bother you? Or did you change something and now it bothers you? And the reason why I ask that question is, if you weren't born with it, it's likely a chemical issue or blockage, ish, blockage in the body. And the chemical issue is usually there's a lot of chemicals in food and that creates the sensitivity. Your body can put up with it for a very long time and then eventually it just breaks down and it has no more tolerance for it. If you were born with it, then that is sometimes genetic. It could be emotional genetics as well. Um, also, a lot of food, like if you were to reduce stress in your body over time, you become more and more sensitive. When you do something all the time, you don't actually know what it's doing to you until you come away from it. That's why fasting is super important. Or stopping any behavior for a short period of time can give contrast. A lot of people have only, have eaten three times a day, every day since they were born. So how do you really know what food does to you until you come off of it for a little bit? It's the same thing with coffee. It's the same thing with meat. It's the same thing with alcohol. It's the same thing with any drug, any medicine, even working out. If you work out all the time, you get used to it. I even find when we go to the beach every single morning for 70 days straight, I don't appreciate it anymore or it gets boring or you know, I'm looking for a different experience. So I'll stop going for a couple of days. And then when I go back, I have all this appreciation again. So food sensitivities usually are from chemicals and blockages in the digestive system. And 99% of research done on humans today are done on people who are dehydrated, stressed, and not feeling good in their bodies. What happens if we test on somebody who's clean and pure? You're going to get a different result. Uh, I saw something about osteoporosis. Look up borax. Um, there's actually a lot of research on borax and how it was suppressed. Specifically, uh, was an osteoporosis medication. Funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, and the, the other thing too, Michelle was saying she fasted for four days and then felt like crap for the next two, for the next two days. Um, eight because everyone else was yeah and then I felt like crap okay good so contrast uh, helped create the experience so I was thinking about this one the other day because if I'm here 
and I take something that's slightly better than what I'm already doing, I'm going to feel good. But if I'm here and I take that same thing, it's not going to make me feel good. So when somebody's stressed and somebody has a blockage in their digestive system and they're, and they're taking in a lot of chemicals and they tell me that they have a food sensitivity to something and that something doesn't work for them and that you know they're, they're trying to sway me into doing the same thing, but we have different starting points. Like if I try that and I'm over here and they're over here, we're gonna have a completely different result. One is gonna bring me down, slow me down, make me feel like shit. For them, it's making them feel good. What happens when they come up a level? It's not gonna feel good anymore. Um, question for the audience today as well is, what are you using to journal? Do you journal uh, best when you write? Do you journal best when you use your phone or some sort of technology? Photos, videos? Is there a specific app you like to use, like Apple Notes, Notion, um, Google Drive, the app, the Human Garage one? How do you like to journal your experience? How to heal teeth? Um, that's a good question. I think that fundamentally to heal anything in the body, the body needs the resources, the time, the space. So reducing stress, number one. Re hydrating, number two. Replenishing the minerals, three. Diatomaceous earth and borax are also really good for helping rebuild tissue. Apple, Apple app called Journal. Yeah, is that good? Are you liking that one? Do you like to handwrite or do you like to voice? Sometimes you can voice note, you can voice the text. Apple cider vinegar. You know what? There was a time where I felt I needed apple cider vinegar. Um, my body doesn't want it anymore. I just... You know, it's all based on where you're at. And this is the, the debate about what's right for your body comes down to you know your body better than anyone else. Hands down. You spend 99.99999% of your day with yourself. And you have circumstances that I can't understand. I don't have enough information to tell you what to put into your body. So, how do we get how do we work around that? You learn how to test for your body. Science is a funny one because if you are a researcher and you're looking to study something, the lens in which you study from and the motivation in which you study for dictates the results you're going to get. Like somebody said to me the other day, you know, but what about coffee? And I said, well, it depends how you're looking at the research because there's, they're asking about research. There's all, there's all these benefits. I'm like, yeah, there's all these benefits, but there's also a lot of consequences. But when are we measuring? Because coffee makes you feel more focused. Coffee makes you feel more grounded in your body. But coffee also drives hormonal energy, which creates stress over time. And the long-term implications on your brain and on your body from drinking coffee, that is a different measurement than if I measure, oh yeah, I feel more alert, I feel more focused, I can work harder, I can remember more, I have more energy, I feel more grounded. Okay, great. So there's a short-term benefit, but what's the long-term consequences? And this is why when we read research and when we study what other people are researching, the lens and the stats and the measurement tools that they use dictate how we tell the narrative about their research. And a lot of research is funded by uh, companies that sell you the product that they're researching or funded by pharmaceuticals or, f or, or funded by people who have another agenda. Like if I, I'll give another one. They did a study on, uh, 
on the herbicides, the pesticides, GMOs, okay? And some of these studies that they did, they're saying that it doesn't impact human cells or bacteria. Okay, great. But the human body is made of billions of bacteria that are not, we're not just made of human cells. We have bacteria and viruses. We have trillions of bacteria and viruses inside of us. So an antibacterial um, product or, um, or some sort of GMO or pesticide or herbicide that, that impacts the bacteria in the human body, they're not researching that. They're saying it doesn't affect human cells but it does affect bacteria which live inside of humans. And those bacteria dictate your mood, they dictate your, vi your, your absorption, they dictate your, your memory, they dictate your emotions, they dictate your cravings. So you're putting something in your body that research is saying only impacts bacteria and not humans, but they're not telling you that that bacteria lives in humans and has an influence on them. So this is why science and research is really funny. You can also look at quantum physics and it's what the the lens in which the observer is looking at the experiment is what they see so i i appreciate the scientific method i just i i prefer to pr test for myself rather than take research because you can ask me you know am i good at public speaking well when are you measuring are you measuring me today or are you measuring me tomorrow are you measuring me on my ability to uh, vo project my voice, on my pacing, on my clarity, on my ability to help people understand a complex concept? So what are we measuring? When are we measuring it? Why are we measuring it? What's, what's the actual data around it? And then what's the story we're going to tell about it? And this is all, it all comes into this this research article and we only show one side so I, I I appreciate science and I like science and and everything we do every single day is n equals one you're testing for yourself test for yourself find out what works for you share what works with you with others and let them test for themselves and come to their own conclusions based on their body and their needs in that moment coffee might help you today because you don't have the ability to drive enough energy to make it through the day. But when you do fast maneuvers for a year, that might change. When you fast for 44 days, that might change. We have completely different circumstances. You're moon gazing. Oh, that's awesome. I don't see the moon anymore. I saw it last night. Who's feeling the, the new moon here? I felt a big shift between last night and this morning. Emotionally, physically, mentally, I felt a shift. It was like a... Also a lot of, uh, we're in Aquarius season right now. I have an Aquarius moon and rising and Saturn. Um, so I'm just sharing my circumstances, but I've been experiencing a lot of, what do I belong doing? What vibes with me? What do I no longer want to do? Um, what's my purpose? So a lot of energy around that. I'm not sure if anybody else is experiencing that, but it's a lot of belonging energy. We're going into the Aquarian age, which is all about belonging. It's like the word that an Aquarian uses, if you listen to them talk, it's actually quite funny. You'll hear Gemini say, I think. You'll hear Cancer say, I feel. And you'll hear, you'll hear uh, Aquarius say, vibe. You know, that doesn't vibe with me. And... That is their terminology. That is the primary state of awareness that they process information. So we're going into that energy. Right now we're in Aquarius. The energy has been about like, what is my purpose? What doesn't vibe with me anymore? What does vibe with me? Capricorn. Capricorn. Who else is feeling that? Are you feeling a sense of belonging or what your purpose is? Or is that just me? Same here. So true. It's all about the vibes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my hair. You know what? I'm actually growing it out right now, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. 
And uh, part of the reason why I do it is because I believe in natural and I believe in authentic. And I believe in being tr who you truly are at your core. I'm not a big fan of makeup. I'm not a big fan of doing things that alter our bodies. I'm not a big fan of trying to put a face on to something that we're not. I mean, I do it in, in different ways. I don't do it with my physical body, but one of the reasons why I do certain things is because I want to change the world's view that we don't have to look a certain way or be a certain way in order to be successful or to be happy or to live the life that you want. You know, you don't have to have perfectly cut hair. I don't have to dress up in a suit. I don't have to have a fancy watch. I don't have to have a fancy car. You know, it's like, just show up as you, who you are at your core. And whatever comes from that is what comes from it. I don't need to try and showcase who I am externally. Yeah, the wind, the wind and the waves at the beach have really picked up. I've been watching that and that happens with every moon. It's really interesting when you spend time in nature, you get to see that. You wish you could not worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I used to spend a lot of time. I mean, look at this. I used to spend a lot of time focusing on making sure my hair was perfect. My body was perfect. I was dressed to the nines. You know, I had lots of clothes. Now, if I went back to doing that, I would probably have some pretty good contrast because I probably spent an hour a day focusing on how I looked. That's a lot of energy, a lot of time. Now I wear the same thing every single day. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to put energy into it. I don't look at myself in the mirror very much. Just literally maybe when I'm brushing my teeth, I don't know. I don't really look at it. And uh, that's an interesting one because you don't realize how much you look at yourself in the mirror until you stop. And you don't realize how much energy you put into getting ready until you stop. And then you see other people doing it. Like when I watch other people get ready, I start getting ready when everybody else is ready. That's the funny part. So they'll spend an hour getting ready and I'm just chilling. They're all running around, even packing. Like when we go on a trip, I wait till the last minute, like one minute left. I'm like, okay, walk over to my closet, throw my clothes in, throw my supplements in, throw my toothpaste and my toothbrush. My computer, I guess, my phone, my tripod. I'm good, done, ready to go. Takes me five minutes. And it's so funny because Maxine, who's seven, she'll come up to me, aren't you gonna pack? Like, aren't you gonna get ready? I'm like, yeah, in like two seconds. I don't need all that prep time. Uh... Yeah, another experiment with the hair was just like, what does it feel like to have long hair? I don't know. I'm not sure how crazy I'm gonna go with it, but I have heard it feels different physically, emotionally, mentally. It's hard to tell though, because I'm incrementally growing my hair over time, so I live with it, so it becomes normal. The only way that I would know is if I grew it really long and then cut it. But I haven't had it long since I was like younger, and that wasn't even long, so. I'm not sure. I think Aisha might kill me if I go too long. <laughs> First I heard it's growing. Oh, you didn't know that I was growing it out, Mom? <laughs> yeah, that's my mom chiming in there. Uh, are you guys planning to come to Florida? Yes, actually we were just talking about that. We're going to come to Florida. Uh, actually, right now we're planning a few locations, Texas, LA and Florida and New York. 
thoughts on lectin? Again, it's like, okay, I can tell you right now, if I went and studied lectin for a decade, I could find you a thousand people who eat it every single day and have lived to a hundred healthy, and I could find you a thousand people who can't stand it. And this goes back to the conversation that we were just talking about. It's like, no matter what I look for, I will find something to validate that. And I will find people who eat it and are healthy. And I'll find people who don't eat it and aren't. And this is like really tough. That's why science is, science is tough. And at some point, we have to make a decision. At some point, you have to pick a side. You have to pick a side. Science is just giving you different perspectives on both sides so that you can make a decision. But that decision is coming from here. Not from here, not from here. Test your body, try it, see how you respond over time. There are so many factors, so many factors. The air you breathe, the bed sheets you sleep in, what you brush your teeth with, what you eat throughout the day. Do you drink coffee or not? Do you drink alcohol or not? Do you take supplements? Which supplements do you take? Do you wear clothes? Do those clothes have chemicals in them? Are there dyes? Do you uh, wear shoes? Do you go barefoot? Do you walk in nature? Do you work out? Do you do fashion maneuvers? Do you do breath work? Do you put on cream? Do you put on sunscreen? Do you stare at the sun? What time do you go to sleep? How many factors are there? There's no way I could tell you if lectin was good or bad. It's just, it's we can isolate things, but in, it, it all depends on your starting point and all depends on where you're at. If you're stressed, there's no way you can take any more stress. Think of it like a full cup. You got a full cup and I pour anything, anything into that cup, it will overwhelm you. Have you ever been so stressed that, or, or like hung over and there's a loud noise in the room and that makes you frustrated or angry or irritable? That's because you're at a max. You, you can't put anything else more in your cup, positive or negative. And if you're highly, highly, highly stressed and you go for a massage, that can actually put you into the negative. If you're highly, highly, highly stressed and you do breath work, that could also have a negative impact on you. So even the, the, the best things for the human body can hurt the human body depending on the conditions. If you break your if you break your ankle and you go run a marathon, well running a marathon's healthy, apparently, by science, but not with a broken ankle. It's actually funny because one of the the fundamental things when you're working in healthcare, it every like 90% of injuries start with I decided to run a marathon. I decided to do a triathlon. And then people end up injured. Yeah, it's, it is overwhelming, but you know what? It's not when you dedicate yourself to understanding yourself. Because, and pick one thing at a time, like what, what is something easy that you can start with? And I think the, the best way to do it is instead of eliminating, substitute or add. So step one, add two minutes of fashion maneuvers a day. Do that for a couple weeks. When you feel comfortable, then add, then add a supplement like diatomaceous earth or silica or minerals. Do that for a month. Okay, great, now you got your handle on that. What's the next thing you can do? Maybe go to bed 30 minutes earlier. Make that a routine. Okay, great, now you're three months in, you've made a significant shift. So that's adding. Adding is easy up front usually unless someone's overwhelmed and they don't have the time or the space to add. It depends what adding is. Is adding like a minute or is adding like an hour? Um, so supplements, 30 seconds, you know, drop it down the hatch, you're good to go. Doing fashion maneuvers, well, you know, 15 minutes. If somebody is super busy, I'm not gonna have them add 15 minutes. I would add, have them add one minute and maybe do a supplement. So it's, it's, it's a micro change that has a massive benefit that pushes them in the right direction over time consistently until they have the time and the space to do more. So add 
Substitute is an interesting one too because it's like, well, you put toothpaste in your mouth every day and you swallow a lot of it. You sit in your bed, you lie in your bed for eight hours a day. You wear clothes for 15, 16 hours a day. You shower every day, two to three times a day, one to two to three times a day, depending where you are. So what are the things that you do all the time that you don't even think about that if you substituted it with something healthier, it would make your life better? Like change your toothpaste. The only, the only effort you have to put in is to find the new company that you're gonna use and then purchase it. Once you've purchased it, now you don't have to think about it. It's something that unconsciously is putting you into the positive every single day instead of unconsciously putting you into the negative every single day. So add, substitute, and then eventually you'll have the time and the space to eliminate. Get rid of it. What material is best for clothing and bed sheets? Technically linen, but best is like, how are you defining best? If you're defining it by health-wise, linen. Because linen is the most breathable and it's a healing, it's, it has the highest healing frequency of all fabrics. That's why they use it in, in medical care. If you, uh, the second best is cotton, but if you want m more for performance or grip, like fascial maneuvers, I like hemp. So what is it that you're measuring for me What's important to me? I like something that I can wear irrespective of the weather. I can wear anywhere I go, from the beach to my house to lunch, in the same shirt, without having to change, without it getting destroyed from the weather conditions, and having it be breathable and dynamic. I wanna be able to grip on my fascia when I'm doing my fascia maneuvers. So I chose hemp. But someone else who might not prioritize gripping their fascia might choose cotton. The linen is tough because linen is limited in colors. It's limited in production. And this, it's usually baggy and like not stylish unless you're like European. <laughs> you know, I tried, I tried a company that was European that had organic stuff and yeah, you... <laughs> It's definitely short. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we were on the beach today, this morning. We go every morning. Yeah, you can wear wool. Uh, do not mix wool, wool and linen. I think that they have some sort of cross where they actually uh, change the frequency of the fabric in a way that you don't want. And what's interesting is we were talking about today, if you're in the 28 day life reset, about frequency. We we're talking about how frequency impacts the body. So if you wanna go, let's go to the micro for a moment. Everything that happens in the macro happens in the micro. Everything that happens in the micro happens in the, happens in the macro. It's like as above, so below. And if you look at it at the micro, what are we? We're atomic particles that have a vibration and that vibration creates a sound and that sound gets put into the environment around you and creates some sort of resonance or uh, synchronizing effect with your environment. That's, the, that's how we see the body, it's a tuning fork, right? So in the 28 day reset today, we actually went through what a healthy cell sounds like versus what an unhealthy cell sounds like. And it is super fascinating. Like if you've never heard that before, it's in the 28 day. Um, I can pull up the sound and you can listen to it and you'll find the exercise in there. But everything comes down to vibration and that vibration creates or emits a sound. And that sound can levitate objects. And this is how I see the human body. I see the human body as water, sand, minerals, bacteria, and viruses, just to oversimplify it. So if we were to vibrate at a specific frequency based on the emotions or our perceptions or our thoughts, we're going to emit a sound. And that's if the sound that we emit 
for a long period of time is the shape of our body, the emotions that we that we show, the thoughts that we have, the diseases that we show up with. I mean, it, it dictates all of that. So let's actually play the sound. And it, it's it's actually kind of cringeworthy when you listen to the unhealthy self. Um, it it makes me feel gross. Could you imagine if that's what you sounded like on the inside? Okay, let's pull it up. I'll let you guess which one's which. I'm gonna play the video. I want you to listen. Oh, it's not very loud, but. hear that? It's very subtle. If you can't hear it, you can find it in the 28th. But each cell emits a frequency and a sound wave. And what was interesting is you can vibrate objects to the point that they levitate. And that's how there's a lot of theories about ancient civilizations and how they lifted two-ton bricks, right? How do you lift that without the equipment or whatever? That's how, is you use sound. I think sound technology is going to come out in the next decade where you'll be able to lift a car with sound and frequency. There's a, a video that I also put in the 28 day and it actually is an experiment where a scientist is showing how they can levitate objects using sound. So go in the 28 day. I mean, if you're interested in learning about this stuff more in depth, we talk about it. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do we stand? Like I, I mean, you can lift objects against gravity using sound so obviously the human body is emitting some sort of sound that allows us to stand our muscles and our bones i believe just stabilize movement and protect us when we're in fear and i believe the water and the sand when we vibrate it at a certain frequency is what lifts us so i believe we're actually 70 percent water and if you vibrate each water particle it lifts up in the air now you have the backbone of the human body and inside of that gel or that water structure that's being lifted through sound, you have the bones and the muscles. And when you stimulate a muscle and a bone, electrically, what does it do? It contracts. It only goes one direction. So how do we really move? Like, I don't understand if the way that we move is only through electrical conduction from the nervous system that doesn't make sense because when we stimulate it it only contracts there has to be another way there was actually a content creator milana who just posted a video and i thought that it was interesting i didn't watch the full thing but it was about fascia and it was about pressure and how pressure creates sound and frequency in the, at the cellular level in the body which is in alignment with what we've been saying for years that we're a pressurized we're a pressurized system we're not we're not me just mechanical we have a biohydraulic system we're filled with water air and physical matter so the combination of all of it is what makes up the human body but when we're studying physics a lot of the physics on the human body is done on uh, it's done on the mechanics like a drawbridge you know we pull it up but what about the fluid that swirls through there and the oxygen that comes in when you breathe and the distribution of pressure when you move and walk there's way more to it I really don't feel like we understand the human body and I don't pretend to know it either I I'm just looking at these things and I'm saying okay there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there and some of it makes sense and some of it doesn't. And then there's a lot of things being used over here in like ancient civilizations or in science that 
validate other things that I believe indirectly, like the sound experiments and, and lifting objects with sound. That has to be in the human body in some capacity. That has to play a role. We emit sound. We vibrate. And I believe that every frequency that we vibrate at is like a subscription on YouTube. Like, if you have Netflix or, well, I guess, I don't know if Netflix does it. I don't really have an account. But if you use YouTube, you can subscribe to people. Or you can follow people on Instagram, right? So, when you subscribe to somebody on YouTube, the algorithm shows you content based on what you subscribe to from that specific channel, but then also related ideas around that channel. That's mirrored after the human body. And we do the same thing. What we focus on, what we subscribe to, what we consciously think about or pay attention to is like a subscription. And from that, you receive information. And it might be information from a source that you know, it might be something that you hear, but you're filtering out billions, trillions of bits of information from your environment all day. There's a concept around memory and forgetting. And, you know, I used to think that I didn't have a good memory. It's actually not true. I just have a really strong filter. I don't care about 99% of things. So the things I don't care about, of course I'm not gonna remember them. I'm filtering it out so that I have more bandwidth to focus on the channels that I subscribe to. So I don't have a bad memory. I'm just specifically hyper-focused on a certain area. I'm subscribing to three channels, not 50. If you're subscribed to 50 channels, good luck. I mean, you're gonna be really busy and really distracted and really focused on all of these different things. I like to hyper-focus on certain areas so that I can become a master at them. And I have channels I subscribe to. I'm interested in, in organic products. I'm interested in, in uh, travel. I'm interested in farming and, and food. I'm interested in relationships. I'm interested in business. I'm interested in the human body. I'm interested in human psychology. I'm interested in astrology. Well, which ones do I actually, I subscribe to all of them. I receive information all day about them. But the ones that I'm the most focused on, I receive the most information. And I progress the most in. And those would be human psychology, my health, growing human garage. So that's like marketing, business, partnerships, strategy, building programs with education and relationship and parenting. Those are the things that I subscribe the most to. Now, which ones I, I have like 90% on some and like 5% on others and 2% on others, but those are my main subscriptions. So what are the channels that you subscribe to? Do you, like, what do you do every single day? What do you think about every single day? What are, what's most important to you? You're going to fill, you're going to walk into your world with those subscriptions and filter out everything that doesn't resonate with it. And that's actually one of the things that happens with when you uh, when you discover something, all of a sudden you start noticing everything about it because you it's like you accidentally landed on a YouTube video about something you didn't know would interest you. It interested you. And now all of a sudden you want to watch and subscribe to channels about that topic or about that thing. It's the same thing. They're mirroring the internet and the Akashic Records. Akashic Records is human history in energetic blueprint. The internet is human history in energetic blueprint, but you can touch it and see it in the physical world. They're different. They're the same thing. They're just showed to you in a different way. One is easier accessible for most people. And it's actually kind of physically there. Like it, it physically exists. It technically, it's like still energy. It's saved in a device, but it's more tangible than the Akashic Records, which is something you can't see physically. 
So the phones, laptops, the internet, everything's been mapped based off of understanding the human experience. So if we go back to those fundamental truths, the small things are the big things or the, the as above, so below, you're gonna see this. If you understand, if you can research and understand how a computer works, then go study the human body and you will learn a lot. It's a lot easier to see it that way. Someone send me some smoke signals for what? Could you post your beach mornings on YouTube? That would be great. Uh, do you mean like uh, the lives? Do you want us to film the full sessions? Uh, without, not the live itself, but actually a higher quality? Is that something that you would be interested in? Could do like a meditative uh, hour long flow with, with the waves and the ocean, just us doing our own movements. Um, it could be, we're not gonna guide it because audio is, it's too much work, like trying to do a film set on the beach, unless you have a shirt on and, and like really good editing team and production and microphones and equipment, it's almost impossible, there's too much wind. But if you wanna do your own free flow fashion maneuvers class, and you want us to just be standing in the frame with the beach and the waves and the sound, well, we can do a whole playlist. I mean, that could be kind of cool. That could be where we're not gonna coach you through the movements, but you do your own flow. You can listen to the waves, you can listen to the beach, you can join us, you can watch the sun, sunrise. That would be interesting. We can do that. We can try. Uh, let's see. Maybe we make a whole playlist about that. Maybe that's something that when people get into the Lysol Artist program they do because they know the maneuvers. Because the 28 days really, I need, I want to be coached and guided through them. But as you progress, like eventually you just want to do it yourself. You don't want to listen to someone else tell you which movement to do. You want to be able to flow into the maneuvers specific to your needs. Every once in a while it's good to do a class because then you do things that you don't normally do in your routine, which is really powerful. Okay, there's a lot of yeses. All right. Well, uh, let's see if we can make that happen. We'll film it. Uh, we'll film it horizontally too, so it'll be a nice frame, and it'll just be us doing our maneuvers. Okay, it's done. It's a lot of yeses, so we'll do it. Is that something like? Is is it is doing it every day different? I guess it is, because the the waves, the wind, the sunrise will be different every single day. And do you guys enjoy watching that? Like, do you do it in the morning with us? Or are you, I don't know. I mean, it's, sometimes it's nice. Sometimes it's, it is a way of manifesting, by the way, if you watch that every single day. It'd be, you know, there's, I've thought about doing like a, a 24 hour live stream of fashion maneuvers. I mean, they, and you know, you have different coaches, different people do it and you can just jump in at any point. I think Headspace has it where you can see how many people are meditating at the same time as you, which is kind of cool. It'd be cool to just sometimes hop in a room without any expectation to say a word and just be and just move, you know, and that's part of a conversation we've had yeah okay I'm seeing a lot of yeses okay um, the conversation we've had is like when we go to the beach in the morning and we want to move that's our meditation and so sometimes people ask you know where are you guys can we join you and and, and sometimes We'll meet up with people and I love meeting people in our community but if I were to do my 28 day practice every single day and I'm showing up and that's my meditation that's my meditation so sometimes we do like meet and greets and then people want work and then they're asking all these questions and then I don't even get to do my practice so We've had this conversation of like, how do we want to navigate that? Because if I meet somebody and you know they're flying in 
from another country. They've never seen us before. Um, we want to meet people. We want to say hi. We want to spend time. And, and we want to have the time and, and some sort of container around that where I can give my undivided attention. And it's not a personal thing. It's a, this is like my practice to take care of me so that I can show up the best person that I am every single day. And if, if we're teaching and if we're answering questions or working on people to start off my day, then I don't get my morning practice in. And then I, you know, I jump on a live or I jump into working or teaching or doing other things. I basically, you're going all day. You're going from 6 a.m. straight till the time you go to bed. So we've had that conversation and I think that there's a way to do it where we invite people either like on certain days to do it together or we have some sort of some sort of agreement among the community that when you show up you can say hi to people you can you know if you want to have conversations you can but this is like the time we move and nobody needs to talk there's no expectation nobody needs to be fixed it's just hang out do your movements at the beach together with people and then go about your day Uh, teaching, yeah, teaching and practicing classes, absolutely. Yeah, teaching and, and and you know what, creating some sort of name is really important so people know. Okay, this is a class where I show up. You know, we're gonna do teaching, answer questions, meet and greet, whatever. Versus, here we go. We're just gonna hang out. We're gonna do our movements on our own. Practice, do your own practice. Take care of yourself and have some fun. So I would I would be more open to doing community-based invitations for those morning meetups if we can create that healthy distinction between the two. I also don't know, like, I've been thinking about lately how to bring people into a different form of what we do I uh, I mean behind the scenes like behind the scenes I, li- I like to do a little bit of teaching I like to learn about the human body but and I like to take care of my body but I also like to do a lot of other things and those things make bore people like I don't I really don't know what I mean we're we're a company built on or an organization built on helping people heal their bodies, not on building systems and processes and content behind the scenes and programs and the education, like how we built everything, the business meetings we go into, the partnerships that we're developing, all of that stuff, like that's what we do behind the scenes. And sometimes, like I've been thinking about, is that something more that I wanna show? Like, do you guys even want to see that type of stuff? Like, I've been building a 28-day life reset and editing, you know, all these different videos to make it, I don't think, yeah, thank you. So so we've been breaking down, like, how are we going to teach people over the next 28 days? What questions are we going to ask? How do we, how do we build the community internally? What movements are we going to do today? You know, that got to cut and edit that video um so i'm not a video editor i taught myself how to edit and i taught myself how to create content i know what's important out of content and so that's really what the 28 day process has been is just taking all of the stuff we've done over the last few years watching through it distilling it down cutting it editing it posting it the night before everybody else has access Um, so I'm not, the 28 day is not done. We're actually just posting it literally the day before. I'm doing day 12 tonight. Four people doing day 12 tomorrow. So it's, it's really, uh, we're not, we're not far ahead. We're doing it in real time. And there's a number of reasons for that. One is like, we're a small team. Two, it's a lot of work. Three, I like kind of doing it with everybody because I can see where everybody's at and how people are reacting to it to inform me to edit and create the next day. Like I see the feedback and I'm like, okay, 
day 10 and day 11, people were super emotional and feeling tired. But you also, I also put up two really difficult classes on day nine and 10. I did that, on, I did that as a test to see. Um, and I just wanna see people's reaction. Like how do people react to the content before I make the next day? you could be mature enough to realize it. Process would be interesting. Ooh. I've been hearing that from a lot of people. Okay, love your intellectual insights and I don't think people would get bored. We'll just be keeping the beaches. It's, uh, doing the beaches is just right. Yeah, we'll keep doing the beaches and we'll post those. Really liking the new 28 day. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a it's been a journey to create that, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of repetition, but it's also a lot of short spurts of information because that's the way that people learn. It's like you get an idea, and I want you to ponder that. If it's a three hour podcast, it's really hard to do that. I mean, I I can't go through an hour podcast. There's no way. I can only do five or ten minutes these days. I'm feeling, I'm loving the new 28 day, thank you. Can you do the resets on the website? You can find our maneuvers on the website, but the actual programs you do in our app, it's so organic the way it's working. Yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm an organic creator. I don't create through planning. I create in the moment. That's actually my creator style. Um, we're gonna create the 28 day. We're gonna start, that's awesome. It's starting on February 1st. You have to be done the seven day. It'll automatically invite you, and then you can join with a group of people. There's gonna be calls and stuff available, so you can join. Did I stain my shirt? Oh no. I wonder what that is. Okay. Second time through. Uh, this time I'm picking and choosing which reset I do because my body does have tired days. That's okay, you know, if you've done it before. Thank you, David, I appreciate that. I believe I saw an email or a message from you somewhere. Uh, recently actually thank you for the support I appreciate that I keep doing the maneuvers a little at a time keep getting sick that's okay your body's processing you know go go at your own pace again it's like how do you create a program that's perfect for everybody it's tough it's really tough like creating the new 28 day it's like okay do we start slow do you start fast who are you building it for I'm building it not for the person who's done two already. I'm building it for somebody who's brand new. So the classes start slow. Um, it takes it takes time to work up, and the advance advancing the maneuvers. I've advanced them pretty quickly, actually, in this new 28 day. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily do that for somebody on their first 20 a day if I look back at it. Like I'm gonna, once it's built, I'm gonna look back at it and see how new people versus uh, experienced people have responded. I think people who are experienced with the maneuvers, it's like, they're loving it. You know, it's fast, it's new, it's more intense, but people who are brand new, it might be a little intense. So it starts on the first, yes, February 1st, and you'll start with a group of people, and then there'll be meetups and a group chat and everything so you can connect with them. Love the new app, thank you. We're gonna be branding it soon. It's actually, so our new app is, Circle is a company that has community apps. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so Circle is a company that has an app, and we are branding our own. So right now, you would go to our website, you sign in or sign up and register. And from there, it will take you to our network. If you want to, you can then go to the app store and download the Circle app and sign in with your email that you signed up in our network with and it'll take you there. Uh, soon it'll be the Human Garage app in the app store so you'll just be able to do it right there. And the other thing too, like we made it free you can just sign up you can join you can do all the programs uh, we did that on purpose we did that because there's a lot of people who just they can't afford a subscription they can't afford learning um, they can't afford health information or to, to buy and purchase apps we just wanted it to be available for people so um, we built a contribution based model instead 
So if you want to donate or monthly and contribute, you can. There's a button actually when you're signing up, you can do that. If not, you can do it when you're actually in the network, in the menu at the very bottom. You can become a contributor after you've signed up. You know, and if everybody in there donated five bucks, literally, if everybody in our network gave a dollar or five dollars per month, we would transform our ability to produce programs and create content. Like we are still doing this with a tiny team. Like we are small and we put everything that we make back into growing this, everything. So uh, with a small donation, either on our website, just donating once or in our circle community, you can become a contributor or you can contribute right at the sign up monthly. That makes a big difference in us spreading this message. I want to translate all of our programs into other languages soon and we're going to need a lot of help for that. So you'll be able to do the 28 day life reset in Swedish. You'll be able to do it in um, Spanish. You'll be able to do it in Japanese. You'll be able to download the supplement guide in other languages. You'll be able to do the fat 15 minute stress reset in whichever language. That's really the goal. The way to do it really quick, really fast, and bring everybody into the manifestation is to open source it. So we're going to bring the community into creating these programs. We're not going to be able to do it ourselves. I mean, we can use AI and we can put our lips to translate it and all that, but I want to bring other people into this. Thank you. I cannot afford the supplements. Yeah, that's no problem. I mean... We're, what, we, what we're working on right now is, is worldwide distribution, so you can purchase the supplements in any country, in-country pricing, based on the economy of that country. We're working on that. That's not easy, um, but it is coming. I don't, when, I'm not sure, but it is, it is a high priority for me. We want to be able to distribute into uh, countries that can't have access to, that don't have access to health products at affordable pricing, to take care of themselves. So this all, it all, it all comes together. It all goes into one place so that we can help more people. And that's the way to do it in the new era. Things are changing. We're coming out of big business, big companies, and we're going into open sourced, working together, community-based organizations. So with that, I'm going to end the live. Thank you everybody for your participation. I will make note of filming our morning resets so you can post it up on YouTube so you can do them on your own at the beach. Uh, circle app. So if you want to start off, you can start off by going to our website, sign up and register in there. Then go into the app store on either Android or, or Google Play and iOS app store and just type circle and it's a blue icon. Otherwise, in the network, in our community network, you can go to the menu and you can find the button. Started taking diatomaceous earth. I've been getting headaches. Uh, yeah, that could be normal. Diatomaceous earth is a, helps you detox from parasites and metals. It also uses a lot of water in the first early stages of taking it because it uses up a lot of water to clean. So you may feel a little bit more dehydrated. Um, you can take extra minerals, take extra water, do the fascia facelift to work on your feet. That will help. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time today. I will be on next Tuesday, same time. I'll see you guys there. Have an awesome full moon in Leo. And please, please, please keep going. If you're thinking of giving up or you don't have the energy to do the 28 day, just do it. You're halfway there. Oh, you're a third of the way there. Come on. You're so close. So keep going. Lean on the community. Ask questions. Show up at the meetups. Whatever you need to do to, to hold yourself accountable, to commit to this. This is the time. This is the time to change your life. Get in the program. Start on February 1st if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time.